tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart.
Praise the Lord and uh, good morning, everyone. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On this Lord's day, as we have come to worship him in spirit and in truth, we're glad to see all of you who have come together today. As we give thanks unto God for all of his goodness unto us. Another week, another Lord's day. And as the psalmist has said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. As we continue in our worship service, we thank God for our praise team. Starting off a little south of the border, and we praise God. Bye-bye to all of those things that affected us out of the will of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has been said that more things are wrought by prayer than the world has ever dreamed of. We're going to, at this time, enter into our prayer period. And for those who'd like to call in our prayer line and be blessed of the Lord, our prayer line number is 646-255-1952. Prayer line 646-255-1952. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we prepare for prayer to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our minister Peter Linton will come into Lead us in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And following him, our scripture will be read by Elder Terence Washington. Praise the name of the Lord. I invite each and every one to stand at this time in the name of Jesus. Our heads and close our eyes. I do believe someone needs something today from the Lord. And if we have faith and confidence in Him, He will do it for you and He will do it for me. Let us bow our heads. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. But what a privilege to carry. Everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. For in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you humble as we know how. Nothing good that we have done, our justice is right. But behold, because of your mercy, your loving kindness, your grace, that is so sufficient to us. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, for loving us with an everlasting love in spite of what we have done in spite of what we did you still love us Lord you're a forgiving God now we come before you Lord Jesus we ask in thee to forgive us of our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness oh God someone is listening right now someone is watching right now someone needs something from you right now and you are the only one can do it. Lord, we look to the left. We look to the right. We look behind. But let us lift our eyes unto the hills. From where comes our help. Knowing that our help coming from you, Lord. Which made heaven and earth. Jesus, you see what is going on in our world. Lord Jesus, fix it for someone this morning. Someone that is in need of a healing, Lord. Someone need of deliverance, Lord. Deliver us set free in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that they were Lord of all. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for being the Lord of all this morning, Lord. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus. Make us a blessing this morning. Oh, God, and take all the glory. Take all the praise that you are to your name. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Victory is yours this morning. Wherever you may be, lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up. They will lock the door, and the King of glory shall come in. Let him come in your heart this morning. Hallelujah, set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we say thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Clap your hands and say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and it's already done in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. May be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to rejoice in his name. Our scripture reading will be coming from the book of Psalms, Psalms 103. I'll be reading to your hearing. I will begin at the first verse and conclude at the 17th verse. Psalms 103, I'll be reading to your hearing. And it reads on this wise, if you would like to stand on the reading of the word, God bless you. How good and pleasant that brothers come together in unity. That include women as well. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgive all thy iniquities? who healeth all thy disease, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowns thee from loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. Verse number six, the Lord execute righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his act unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenty in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor reward us according to our iniquity. Verse number 11. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so greater is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. Like as a father pity his children, the Lord pity them that fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembereth that we are a dust. As for men, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish. Verse number 16, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto the children, children. This is the word of God for the people of God. The word of God is how, has, has already been blessed. Glory be to God. Amen. You may take your seat. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're grateful for all the things that God has done, just give him a wave offering. Just tell him that you love him. Thank him for all that he's done in the name of Jesus. These past 16 months have been rough, but God has decided for us to be here. Yes, God. So yes, many God. people didn't make it, but God saw fit for us to be here. Lord God, we are grateful for all that you have done. Hallelujah.
Come and listen right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We are so grateful to God for the great privilege that we have to be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we give God thanks for all of that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we move forward in our worship service today, we want to thank each and every one for their support of Greater Refuge Temple Church, your financial support. We thank God for you. Without you, we certainly could not do it. We wouldn't be here. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank all of our viewers, those who are watching us live stream, and who have been supportive also of the efforts of Greater Refuge Temple. We thank you for all that you've done. How the Lord has blessed this church through your giving. Thank you for your tithes and for your offerings. And we encourage you to continue to bless the work of the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The workers are moving forward on schedule with our air conditioning unit. They've taken them out and we're just waiting for the moment when they will be completed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on supporting. And we ask that you would continue to give, as we said earlier, in your tithes and your offerings. If you're in the neighborhood and you'd like to, when you're walking by, you may stop and drop your tithes in the box that's a secure box in the back of our church. Or you continue to give as you come on Sunday mornings or those who will give electronically by Givelify. But keep on giving to the Lord. Uh, the song would say, give unto the Lord, and he'll give you more to give. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we prepare to give in our tithes and our offerings, we ask that you would take your love gift, those who are here. And as we pray the prayer of consecration, asking God's blessings upon our offerings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us and brought us as far. We give to him with thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your tithes and your offerings in your hand. As we bow our heads in prayer, O oh dear God, we give to you our offerings and our tithes. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. You've been good to us. We can't thank you enough. We thank you from the heart for being a good God, a kind God, loving God. And we give in thanksgiving unto you and ask your blessings upon these gifts. Bless the gift, Lord, and bless the giver. Everyone, Lord God, who gives in this offering, bless and continue to make them a blessing. Through Jesus Christ, to our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Our deacons will serve at this time for our tithes and for our offerings as we give unto the Lord in our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah.
thank you for giving. May the Lord bless you in your support of his work here at Greater Refuge Temple. Our praise team will give us their final selection and following the praise team, the next voice you will hear will be that of our speaker for this Lord's Day, our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr. First, our praise team.
this morning. I would like to encourage you on this morning. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Woo! I know we can't touch our neighbor, but just encourage yourself and say, don't give up on God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. I said, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Ah, yes, Lord, he's able. How many of you know he's able? I declare that's why the word of God says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I dare somebody to yell out, he's able. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you now. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. We lift your name on high. We thank you, Father, for being Lord in our lives. God, we ask you now, Lord God, to please forgive us for our sins. Anything we may have said or did or thought that was not pleasing your sight, we ask you now, Father, to forgive us and count us worthy to escape and make us better by your power and by your grace. God, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Bless now your word. Bless the preacher and bless the hearer. In the name of Jesus, Father, now please let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly do praise and thank God for his goodness and his mercy towards us on this morning. Amen. And all the wonderful uh, praises of God that we've heard on this morning. We praise and thank God uh, for our pastor, and we certainly do honor him, Bishop Wright. Amen. And to Mother Wright, we praise and thank God for your mother. And certainly my lovely wife who sends her greetings to you on this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. To my fellow brothers in the gospel, we certainly do honor you. And we certainly do salute, amen, the ushers and uh, the nurses uh, unit uh, who are do doing an outstanding job of providing their skills and services Amen. To make sure that we all remain safe in these difficult times. Amen. We praise and thank God for our tech team, our security, and all of the people of God who are doing such an outstanding job. Amen. To keep us safe. Amen. Uh, time is far spent. Let us get into the word of the Lord. We also do honor on this morning our missionary president. Amen. Uh, missionary Janice Johnson. We praise and thank God for you. Missionary Johnson, we thank God for you. Uh, let's go to the word of the Lord in a familiar passage of scriptures, Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs chapter number three. Reads on this wise, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For, lengthen, for the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon ta the tablets of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart 
from evil. I want to use for a thought on this morning, learning to lean on Jesus. You know, as a minister of the gospel, I find inspiration uh, in many ways. And oftentimes, before I come to you and preach, the Lord has already dealt with me regarding what I would preach about. Uh, it's difficult to preach somebody else's message or somebody else's text or the same way somebody else preaches because it's not the way that God deals with you in that particular moment. It doesn't mean that what they're saying is not true or what you're saying is not true, it's just different. Amen. And I think we should celebrate differences. Amen. Uh, I can't be you and you can't be me. Uh, and when I cease to be me, uh, I become a, ch a cheap duplication of you. And I would like to also suggest to you that nobody can be better at being me than me. That'll preach all by itself. And so, uh, I find inspiration in many ways when I preach. I typically, most of the time, I would probably say about 85% of the time, it is in my own reading uh, and then something stands out to me and the Lord begins to deal with me in that area. Or uh, second to that is when someone else is ministering uh, and what they say, something that they say stands out to me and I will record it down. Oftentimes that's why, amen, before we came out with cell phones, you would oftentimes see me with a pen writing as somebody was talking, amen, or scratching something down in my Bible. But now that we have cell phones, you jot those thoughts down in your cell phone. Or finally, sometimes it also comes to just mere conversation that you have with individuals. And I must tell you that the inspiration of this message came to uh, fruition in a conversation I was having the other day with my father-in-law who lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. For those of you who don't know him, his name is District Elder uh, Everett Sanders, a man, and he and I were talking, and in our conversation, uh, he had been having uh, some medical challenges, and thank God the Lord has seen him through that and is seeing him through that. Uh, but I asked him, I said, well, how are you doing? And his response to me was, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And when he said that, it brought back memories in my mind. Uh, and if you will allow me to indulge just for a moment, there was a lady by the name of Missionary Marie Clark. Missionary Marie Clark sang in the uh, gospel chorus for many years, but my, my experience with her was a bit different she came out of the church into which I was born into, which is called the Straightway Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Bronx. Amen, right there on Union Avenue, a little small storefront church, amen. And she was, at the time, the missionary president when I was a young boy. And Mother Clark, every time you would ask her how she doing, she would say, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And, and uh, 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 that, I understood it. I guess I understood what she was saying, uh, the basic concept of that, what she was saying initially. But uh, as she began to age, uh, I, I began to scratch my head because she was still saying, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And what was uh, amazing to me was that uh, Mother Clark died in her 90s. Uh, and when I would go to visit her, she would still say, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And when my father-in-law mentioned that to me, I thought about him and his ministry and the years that he'd been saved, amen, and I thought to myself, well, when do you learn to lean on Jesus? And that was what struck this message because I began to look in the scriptures to try to figure this thing out when do we actually learn to lean on Jesus? Well, our scripture text brings us here, amen, to uh, the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs speaks to us about wisdom. And Lord knows we need wisdom more now than ever. Amen. I haven't seen such 
foolishness before in my life. Amen. Foolishness from the White House to our street corners. Pure foolishness. Just, just uh, 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 people who are just unwise. Man, and they're unwise because they don't uh, respect the word of God. Because, amen, there is wisdom through the word of God. Man, uh, uh, and if we were to walk in that wisdom, we would certainly be blessed by the word of God. That's why Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 14 begins by saying, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from thy dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understanding the word of the Lord, understanding God, amen, through his word. Because the word, amen, helps us to be equipped for the things that we must deal with in this world. And then as we look to the word of God here in the book of Proverbs, uh, the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Uh, and and uh, Sam, uh, 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 Sam, uh, Solomon, excuse me, Solomon, amen, uh, we see is the writer of a good portion of this book. He's not the only writer, amen. We know that uh, uh, King uh, uh, Lemuel wrote some of it and uh, several others uh, contributed to the book, but, but it is Samuel who we see uh, uh, oftentimes in this book. And in this third chapter, we find Samuel, amen, writing to us. It is this book that gives us true understanding. Its objective is to give us understanding, for us to understand, amen, what God's will is for the people of God. It's to help everyone. It's to help the simple. It's to help the young. It's to help the wise man. It's to help uh, us to understand God's will for our lives. And so this book helps us tremendously. It helps us so that we would use Amen. Not only common sense, but uh, the word of God would help us so that we can be holy and righteous. Amen. I said holy and righteous. I know there's not much talk about holiness now in the world, but holiness is still right. Uh, hello, lights. I said holiness is still right. And I know that there are a lot of folks who have a lot of different ways. Uh, that's why you got to be careful with the, amen, philosophy of men. The, the scriptures warn us against that. Amen. That, that, that uh, uh, if we're not careful, we will be given to philosophies of men as opposed to the word of God and what is right and what is true. It is now more than ever that you see people sharing what they believe. Uh, and that's, that's nice. Amen. But, but I, I would prefer to know what the Word of God says about it. And I would like to challenge each and every one of you, don't just take anyone's word for anything. Search the Scriptures. Read the Word of God. Amen. For in them we have eternal life. Uh, it is the Word of God uh, that gives us the wisdom that we need. It's the Word of God that gives us the insight. It's the Word of God that gives us uh, all that we need uh, to live out our days. And so the Word of God is important for us. Uh, it is the Word of God that helps us. The Word of God helps us to avoid uh, the pitfalls of life. And so wisdom is important. It's important as children of God. Uh, wisdom is important because uh, 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 most of us learn lessons the wrong way. Unfortunately, most of us learn lessons through trial and error. And that's one way of learning things. You certainly learn things through trial and error. Uh, and, and I guess there's nothing wrong with that uh, to some degree, but, but there are some things you shouldn't have to learn by trial and error. I didn't hear anything. You know, if I see you fall 
uh, in that corner. When I go to that corner, I'm going to look to see if there's a hole. Man, if, if, if I see that, that, that you fell in some area of your life, I, I, I need to pay attention to that to make sure that I don't fall into that same ditch. Because if the blind leaves the blind, the both of them fall in a ditch. I heard uh, someone say to me uh, once, uh, I, I, we were talking and, and I thought I was saying something great. I was saying it uh, to one of our fathers uh, 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 in the gospel and I said uh, to them, I said, you know, only a fool doesn't learn from his own mistakes. And his response back to me was, well, only a fool has to learn from his own mistakes. You should be able, others, you should be able to learn from others' mistakes. And that's what, that's what Solomon attempts to do here. Solomon attempts to teach life lessons to his son. He shares these life lessons and he speaks to them. And in chapter number three, what we see here is Solomon speaking uh, with wisdom. He speaks with them and he shares with them six points between chapter, uh, this chapter uh, and chapter number three, six points between verses number three, uh, excuse me, between verse number five and six, which we'll highlight today. He speaks to them about six true points that I think is important to us. The first thing that he says to them, uh, to his son, is trust in the Lord. So he explains to him where his trust needs to be. The word trust uh, implies confidence. In other words, I have confidence in the Lord. Uh, it is a concept that is associated uh, with uh, a solid, secure knowing and understanding, a firm confidence. Uh, simply states that we can put our confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, because he is trustworthy. You know, you, you, you can't trust folks that aren't trustworthy. Come on here, somebody. I, I, you know, if... if, if if, 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 amen, uh, uh, someone has a bad habit, you certainly wouldn't trust that person in the area in which they have a bad habit. That's why you take your pocketbook with you when you go to the bathroom. Come on here, somebody. I love all the saints, but I'm not leaving my wallet on the table when I go to the restroom. There, 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 there is a sense. However, you will do that with people that you know. You don't do that when you're home among the people who you live with. By God's grace, you wouldn't have to do that. Sometimes you do, but, but most likely, if, if, if it's your husband or wife, because they have proven themselves trustworthy, you trust them. So that's what the scripture is saying to us here. Trust in the Lord. We can put our trust in him. <laughs> and I praise and thank God on this morning that we can put our trust in him. He is confident. Amen. We can put our trust in him. That's why we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we can put our trust in him. That's why Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And so he says, trust him. Trust him even when you don't understand him. Trust in the Lord. Amen. We can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I praise and thank God on this morning that my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I have a true trust in Jesus Christ that God cannot lie and everything that God has promised, he will do. That's why I trust him. Because I have an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ and he has proven himself trustworthy. So, amen, I can trust him. I can trust him even when I don't understand him. 
I can trust him, amen, even while others are fainting, amen, around me. I can trust him. He is reliable. He is able. So I trust him. And so, man, Solomon didn't just say blanketly trust in the Lord, but he goes on to say with all the heart, how are we to trust him? With everything that we have in us, we should trust him. In other words, leave nothing out. Give God, give God everything. Now, when, when this, this term here, with all your heart, it, it, it's not speaking of the heart as uh, the beating source or one of the organs of the body. It, it, it's speaking to us uh, about the heart as the control mechanism for the rest of you. The central place in which you direct every feeling, every emotion, everything comes out of the heart. The Bible even says, out of the abundance of the heart. It is the heart. He says, he says, trust in him with everything you got. If, if, the, if the heart is the control mechanism for the body, give him everything. Don't leave anything out. Don't allow the enemy to let you have a plan B. <laughs> you know, sometimes when we uh, say we believe God, but, uh, or my plan B is, let me tell you, when you trust God, there is no plan B. The next time somebody asks you what your plan B is, you tell them to keep on trusting God. That's why the psalmist said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen that heart. Wait, I say again, on the Lord. It's a continuous waiting. I, I, have, I have no other plan but to trust God. <laughs> and I come to talk to somebody on this morning, amen, who has everything you have in one, box, uh, one basket and made up in your mind that if God doesn't do it, it just won't be done. Oh, yes, Lord. I have no plan B. I'm just simply trusting in God. Then he goes on to say in that same verse, he says, And lean not to thine own understanding. In other words, don't depend on anything else. Don't depend on your smarts. Don't depend on your wisdom. Don't depend on your strength. Don't depend on anything other than a man leaning on God and his understanding. Why? Why is that important? Because the Bible says it like this. The Bible says, uh, my, uh, his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And while you're thinking here, God is thinking up here. Oh, 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 I, I, this may not be for everybody, but I know it is for somebody because while you're thinking apartment, God is thinking house. Why, while you're thinking metro card, God is thinking BMW. While, while, while you're thinking uh, uh, about your next paycheck, God is thinking about making you your own business. said you got to be careful don't 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 be deceived don't lean to your own understanding and so I finally got it I finally got it minister Dinkins that what 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 mother Clark was trying to explain to me was that you never stop leaning <laughs> it's an ongoing process until the day you die you got to keep on leaning Oh, yes, Lord. And so, and so that's what my father-in-law meant when he said to me, he said, son, I'm learning to lean. Every day, I've got to struggle with this old flesh. Every day, I've got to shut this flesh down. Hey, man, with all of the crazy thoughts that go through my mind, all of the negative things that the enemy is telling me, I've got to shut it out and lean not to my own understanding. Ah, yes, Lord. 
Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because studies have shown the Bonner Group took a study of Christians. I'm almost done. I, I, I promise I'm not going to be long. Uh, 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 the Bonner Group took a study of Christians. And over 75% of Christians said over this pandemic that they were struggling in their emotions and felt like they needed someone to talk to. They, they said that they, that they believe God, they love God, they, 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 they were in true relationship with God, but yet sometimes the pressures of life can weigh you down. And I, I know some of you try, may not want to admit it or not, uh, uh, but I come to tell you, for me, for William Wilkins Jr., sometimes the biggest struggle is not on the uh, outside, it's on the inside. There are times that I have to shut my own mind down. There are some times, amen, that I wake up in the middle of the night, amen, uh, perhaps to use the restroom or something, and while you're trying to get back to sleep, the enemy is putting stuff in your mind, trying to disrupt your sleep. I wish I had a witness in here. Oh, yes, Lord, they may have to call a psych ward on me, I guess, but I come to tell you that if you keep on living for God, that the enemy will try to disrupt your mind. And so that's why I have to lean not to my own understanding. <laughs> ah, yes, Lord. I guess this is a good place to take this thing on in. Because, amen, that's why the word of God declares that we should cast our cares <laughs> uh, upon him. That's what, that's what leaning is all about. That's how you do it. You just simply give it to God and say, God, I can't handle this anymore. I've been trying to deal with it. I've been trying to do the right thing. But everywhere I look, I'm being fought by the enemy. And so Solomon says to his son, if you're going to make it in this life, you're going to have to learn how to lean. Hallelujah. Because just when you think you figured out life, <laughs> life gives you a twist or turn. I wish I had some witnesses here. Just, just when I thought I had it all figured out, something else knocked me down off of my feet. Uh, just when I thought uh, that, that, that I had, 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 had become a great Christian, Somebody would say something or do something that make me have some crazy thoughts in my mind to say you better be, uh, yes, Lord. Uh, uh, and so that's why I had to realize, Missionary Johnson, uh, hallelujah, that in this flesh uh, uh, dwells no good thing. <laughs> I had to come to grips with this thing, Tori, because I realized that while I was trying to do it by myself, that I could never, 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 never be what God wanted me to be. Uh, I feel like preaching now. Uh, uh, I'll never be what God wants me to be, uh, trying to do it by myself. Uh, so I, I had to make up in my mind uh, that the only way uh, I could be successful uh, in serving God uh, is to trust in the Lord uh, with, all, uh, with all of my heart uh, and lean not uh, to my own understanding. Uh, every time I tried to do it on my own, uh, I made a mess of it. Uh, do I have any witnesses in here? Uh, that every time uh, you tried to do it on your own, uh, you made a mess of it. Uh, uh, every time uh, you thought you had it figured out, and, uh, here comes something else. And, uh, but I've come to tell you on this Sunday morning, uh, I confess, uh, hallelujah, uh, I need thee. Uh, uh, yeah. Whoa. Uh, 
Can I preach it like I feel it? I need thee. Whoa. I need thee. Yeah. Every hour. I wish I had some help in here. I need thee. Oh, oh bless me. Now my Savior. I come to thee. And so what Solomon had to get his boy to understand is that the only way that you're going to live this thing out is that you're going to have to put all your weight on Jesus. And now I understand why Mother Marie Clark would walk with that little old cane. And when I would say, Mama, how you doing? And she'd say, baby, I'm learning to lead. I get it now, David, more than I've ever gotten it because I realized that after being an ordained elder, after being a consecrated a bishop, I'm still learning to lead. I'm learning to lead on Jesus. And I come to tell you, you can't do it on your own. You gotta learn to lead. You can't do it by yourself. You gotta learn to lead. Look at somebody and say, I'm learning to lead. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm learning to lean. I would have lost my mind, but I learned to lean. I would have gave up, but I learned to lean. I would have been dead in my grave, but I'm learning to lean. When my children act like they lost their mind, I'm learning to lean. When the job start acting funny, I'm learning to lean. When my honey ain't got no money, I'm learning to lean, hallelujah, because I realize that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the presence of God. And I've come to tell you on this Sunday morning, if you put your weight on God, he'll lead you, he'll guide you, he'll walk you through it. Yes, Lord, you can be blind in the presence of God. You can admit, I don't know it, in the presence of God. Lead me, God. Guide me, God. Every step of the way, somebody raise your hand and say, I'm learning to lead. Sit down for one minute. Let me finish this. He says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. That means everything. And lean not to thine own understanding. Then it goes on to say, Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And some of us uh, believe that the only way that we can acknowledge God is on our knees. But I've come to tell you today that sometimes it's not on my knees. Sometimes it's while I'm on the train. Sometimes it's while I'm at work. Sometimes it may be while I'm reading my scripture. And the Lord begins to speak to me through his word says, if you acknowledge me in all your ways, he will direct thy path. And I've come to tell you, what a wonderful place to live. Can you imagine living a life where you acknowledge God about everything? <laughs> and then he directs your path? <laughs> Let me Come on. Beautiful shoes on, you know, she jumped out of a plane. She's tough. <laughs> Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he directs your path. That is not just me holding his hand. But that's a little more than that. That means that everywhere I go,
get this. What? What Solomon, what Solomon was trying to explain is that there is a relationship where you have with God that is so close that every step you make and every move you make he's with you that means you don't curse people out in the parking lot because he's walking with you he's leading you he's guiding you that's why the psalmist said and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own I guess, I guess, I guess. Sister Hepburn, that's what the songwriter meant when he said, draw me nearer, <laughs> nearer precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. I wanna be so close to you that every step I make, I'm making it in the name of Jesus. All right, I'm done, y'all. I guess y'all don't get this, but, 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 I need you to understand that there is a place in God that you can get that is so close that you acknowledge him about everything. Let me tell you something, and it may not be good English, but I don't want nothing God doesn't have for me. I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care how much pain it may cause me, but God, if you got to close the door. Some of y'all mad right now because he didn't propose to you. But thank God she got him and you don't have him. You would have been in a nut house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got him. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed just as well as the doors that God has opened. All right, I'm done. Listen. Deuteronomy 28 says it like this. And it shall come to pass if thou should hearken Diligently. That's the whole heart. That's, that's everything. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And to observe and to do all which I have commanded unto thee. This day that the Lord shall set thee. When you walk with God, God begins to set things up for you. People are mad with you because you got a promotion, but what they don't realize that God set that thing up. They're rolling their eyes at you because God has given you favor with your supervisor. They're mad with you now because, amen, they speak to you kindly and treat them terribly. Why? Because I've got the blessings of the Lord on my life. Said, I'm gonna set thee. I'm gonna set thee. Whew. And I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning, but God told, just told me to tell somebody that the whole thing has been a setup. Everything you've been going through is a setup. Everything that the devil meant for evil, God is gonna turn it around for your good. The whole thing is a setup. God is about to set you up and make you the head and not the tail. God is about commandments, do what I have told you to do. You learn to walk in me. 
that I will give you the desires of your heart. Your homework this week, your homework this week, your homework this week is to trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and watch what God does in your life. I've come to tell you on this morning, and this may not be for everybody, but I've come to declare a prophetic word. Hear ye the word of the Lord. That what God is about to do in your life. Ha! I don't know who I'm talking to. It may not be for everybody. But hear ye the word of the Lord. That God is going to make you the head and not the tail. He's going to make you above only and not beneath. He's going to shut the lion mouth of your enemies. He's going to give you what you thought you could not have because you have obeyed the word of the Lord. Now all you got to do, all you got to do, if you believe it and you receive it, give God the best praise you got. Put your hands together and give God the best praise you got. Savior, if you want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, right where you're sitting right now, right where you're standing, God can fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If there's somebody here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and want to receive him now, just lift up your hands right now. Just lift up your hands and begin to give God some praise. And I promise you, God can fill you right now with the gift of the Holy Spirit, with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. It's yours for the asking. Now listen, we're going home. 
but I want you to live this week. I want you to live like the world belongs to you because it belongs to your father. I want you to walk with clarity and understanding that if I put my trust in Jesus Christ, that everything that God has promised, I can possess by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe it on this morning? Do you believe it on this morning? Come on, stand to your feet if you will. I will trust him. Yeah. I will trust you. I will trust him. I will trust you. Yes, Lord. We want you to leave in order from the back. From the back, the ushers will lead you out. And I believe they're going to open up this side door in the name of Jesus Christ so that those who would like to leave from the side can do so. That's what I was instructed on this morning. But for those who believe that God is about to unleash some things in your life, that God is going to give you your heart's desire according to his will. Would you just lift up your hands for our benediction? And say, Lord, I trust you to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Go in peace. Refuge Temple salutes its 2021 graduates. 
Greater Refuge Temple celebrates the class of 2021. Talitha Sutton graduated from Pace High School, attending Rochester Institute of Technology. Tyra Bunch graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a BA in Criminology and minor in Economic Policy. Kendall Wright graduated from Delaware State University with the degree Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communications. Ashley Linton graduated from State University of New York at Fredonia. Degree obtained Bachelor of Science in Sound Recording Technology. Tatiana Goolsby graduated from St. John's University with a degree Bachelor of Science in Public Relations with a concentration in Marketing and Advertising. Praise God for our 2021 graduates. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Don't be to be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary.